off the Blue Series. Come on, give it up one more time for our Blue Men group. Man, exciting, exciting, exciting. My name's Brian Lambert, one of the pastors here. Welcome you to our brand new Blue Series, first week. And uh, man, this is a great way to kick it off here. Uh, there's a lot to this series, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. But before we get started, can we welcome all those that are watching on our iCampus today, all around the world. People are watching Journey Church, and man, we're excited about what God is doing through that. So here you are, first week of Blue. Maybe you are here because someone invited you. Maybe you received something in the mail, or maybe you're here because you heard the Blue Man group was going to be here. For whatever reason you're here, I believe that you're here by divine appointment, and God has got great things to share with us uh, today in this series. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit about the series, uh, Pastor Eric did a great job describing it. If you weren't here last week, um, the series is based around water. We're going to be talking about water today. We're going to be talking about it for the next few weeks. But what we want to do at Journey Church is we actually want to put feet to our faith, and we want to be a part of what God is doing all around the world. So what uh, Alan Hargrove was sharing earlier in the offering is that we're believing that above and beyond, uh, going over above and beyond our ties, we want to plant fresh wells of living water, fresh drinking wells there in Peru. We're going to dig. We know that um, as a church, we've already committed to four, and Oak Leaf has committed to several, but what we want to do is go above and beyond. We're believing that we're going to be able to dig somewhere between 12 uh, wells uh, with fresh drinking water for the people of Peru. So they will be able to have fresh drinking water, just like you and I, and that uh, you know we can be a part of that great movement of what God wants to do. So I hope you guys are excited about uh, being a part of that. You know, it takes all of us getting out there and making that a part of our everyday life as being a part of what God is wanting to do uh, in and through us. So I hope you are open to that. So before we get started in God's word today, let's go ahead and pray and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you're doing, God, in and through us, Lord. I pray that you would move in and through us today, God, in this series, God, that you would open up our hearts to receive from you all that you have to give us today, God. Father, give us eyes to see, ears to hear. Lord, I pray that as people have come here, they're here by divine assignment of you today, Lord. So I pray that your word would come alive in our hearts by the power and the work of the Holy Spirit and that we would be ready to be used by you in every way that you could use us, God. Father, I pray over the next few weeks that we would get a deeper revelation of who you are, what this living water is, God, and that how we can move in it, God, and how you can make it a part of our everyday life. Father, we join with Oak Leaf Christian Fellowship even right now in this place as they're even going and being a part of this series. Father, we pray for their efforts and all that, God, you are going to do in and through the people there at Oak Leaf Christian Fellowship. And Father, we pray over the people of Journey Church that you would move among us in mighty ways. We give you praise and adoration for all that you are in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Will you turn in your Bibles to John chapter 4 and... Um, you know, this morning we're going to be talking about living water, and uh, you know, I, I wanted to kind of give you kind of a, we've talked about what the series is all about, but I wanted to talk to you about water this morning and how it applies to our life. You know, the, 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 def, the definition of water is actually very simple. It's a, a transparent, odorless, tasteless liquid. It's a compound of hydrogen and oxygen for all you sci-fi heads, you Discovery Channel HD people. All you, you guys know this stuff, right? You guys know that some of you chemists out there know what the, the makeups of water and that it actually freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius and it boils at around 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. Some of the fun facts about water that you can pull up on your little Google browser if you guys get bored and just dying to know more about water is that 75% of the earth is actually covered in water. And uh, it's, it's pretty amazing um, that we live on a planet that is full of water, but yet there's such a lack of drinking water uh, in, their, in these different regions where they cannot get fresh water. In fact, the number one cause of death globally is the, the lack of fresh, clean drinking water. And so we're going to be talking about it over the next few weeks, but I think it's incredible that 97% of the Earth's water is actually in the oceans, and only 3% of the Earth's water can actually be used as drinking water. And that really becomes the issue. 75% of the world's fresh water is frozen, 
in the polar ice cap. So how many of you guys want to pray for global warming so we can actually get all of that fresh water and uh, have all the water that we can bottle or to drink for all of our neighbors out there all around the world? So the average person in the United States uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water each day. We use about 80 to 100 gallons of water each day. That's not including our families. That's talking about an average a use of what we do. You know, some of you guys are thirsty out there. During the medieval times, though, a person used only about five gallons per day. How much has, has society changed? No more outhouses, right, guys? No more, no more grandmas out. How many of you guys have grandmas? And how many of you guys have outhouse stories that you've heard from your grandmas? That is kind of gross man i'm so glad we live in a generation where there's flushing water and all that good stuff and and we're blessed to live here in the states where we have all of that it takes about two gallons of water to brush your teeth for those who don't turn the faucet off two to seven gallons to flush a toilet and 25 to 50 gallons to take a shower it takes about one gallon of water to process a quarter pound of hamburger so when you go through mcdonald's drive through you think about that quarter pounder it took a, a gallon of water to produce that little patty that you got there and it takes about 2072 gallons of water to make four new tires so water's everywhere we use water for everything water is just a part of our life it's a part of our culture it's all surrounding us it's in our oceans it's in our lakes we live in jacksonville where we can enjoy water sports and get out there on black creek and in eagle harbor and and all of our surrounding areas and we can enjoy the wonderful creation that God has. So you have to ask yourself, so what's the big deal about talking about water in church? The truth is, is that though there's physical uh, issues with not having fresh drinking water, the Bible's very clear that we must partake in living water. And we're going to talk about that today. What is living water? So in the natural, we can survive about a month without food. How many of you guys have ever fasted before? Anybody ever fasted before? Just, just went on the water and it was good for you. Your body just begins to detox and all that stuff. But we can only live without food for about a month. And we can only live without water for about a week. So how precious is water to the physical, biological makeup of the human body? So what God has designed in the natural for us to have fresh drinking water, I believe that we're going to see today in God's word that there is a parallel, that God has a living water for you and me as believers today, that if we're born again of the spirit of God and Christ has come in and he has changed us, there is a living water that you and I must partake in in order to sustain spiritual life. I believe that God wants us to be able to tap in to this living water so that there is never times of drought in our lives where there's times of always times of refreshing. And I believe that God wants to show us, you know, in, in John chapter 4, Pastor David Hogg from New Covenant Assembly actually shared on this. So we're not going to go deep into the story, but there's Jesus at the well and he's talking to this Samaritan woman and he's there to actually draw physical water. In fact, the Bible says in this story that Jesus is there at the well. He sits down and he's weary. He's, he's weary from the journey and he's actually wanting a physical drink. But God shows up. Jesus has a purpose and a plan for everything that he's ever done. So he's there at the well and that's where we find ourselves today in John chapter 4 starting with verse 13. It says this. Jesus replied, anyone who drinks of this water, say anyone, anyone who drinks of this water will soon become thirsty again. He's talking about being there at the well with the Samaritan woman. He's talking about being there, she, you know, he's, he's looking to get a drink of water. She's there to get a drink from this deep well, a physical drink. But anyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, Jesus says. But in verse 14, he says, But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. 